Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Top of the World. We have a situation of impending doom this morning. Is something going to be something a little bit different? But Well, it isn't because it's just a normal day-to-day -day struggle of living in an Arctic region in a building that's large, fired only by wood and run mainly by one man. So, Sunday morning, it's, uh, I don't know, 06, 40, 100 hours. Um, Temperatures outside is minus 22 degrees, that's 22 degrees below freezing, whether you're Fahrenheit or centigrade. Uh, normally, this part of the building, in uh, previous years, it sits between 10, uh, 8 and 10 degrees above freezing overnight until I get the furnace lit and we start putting heat into it. What I've noticed this year is how cold behind me is the original entrance to the school, which is blocked off and how cold the stairwell is. Now there's no heat in the stairwell, but it's always sort of kind of maintained an element of heat. And I've noticed how cold it is, even to the extent that we've had to close a door that we just never close. Now as uh, my uh, older subscribers, for the newer ones of you, there's uh, under general building and maintenance in my section, there's, there's videos I've done on replacing radiators and stuff. Well, we had to drain the, the entire central heating system in this school, in this building, this year. And I didn't realise, because I very rarely touch them, but the radiator is in this room that I'm standing in, which is a stores, which has been a store since the 1980s. Right? The school closed in 1979, and it was bought by the man that actually built his house right next door. And he ran it as the same business that I run today from the 80s. So this has been a store from the 80s. Have these moved since the 80s? No, they haven't. But there are four radiators behind this. This was an original part of the school. There's a drinking fountain there. Um, I'm not quite sure what this was, a corridor, a cloakroom perhaps. Something, anyway. Might have even been an upstairs toilet, although all the toilets were in the cellars. What I noticed is the two radiators I can get to are not working. They're airlocked. Now the radiators above them work and the radiators below them work. But on this floor, in this area, the four radiators in here are airlocked. So I've been noticing this area has been cold, which means the workshop radiators have been flowing heat into this. When I come down this morning, I'm three degrees above freezing. That's not good, right? That is a situation of impending doom. The windows are three millimeter plate glass two sheets on the other side of that at the moment is 22 degrees below freezing on this side it's three degrees above freezing why is that a situation of impending doom you can lose this building real fast real fast now for the first time we got glycol for the first time we got glycol in the radiators because it's so expensive we haven't been able to afford to put it in but it's in there so the radiators are not frozen, but they will freeze. But that's not the impending doom. The impending doom is if you lose one part of the building, the rest follows. And here, it's not like um, it's going to warm up any time soon. Right? So the first year we were here, we had one heater in one room, and outside that room was minus 20 degrees. Right? And that's minus 20 degrees Celsius. So that's 22 degrees below freezing. On a good day through that winter, it could be minus 16 or minus 15 outside the bedroom door. So we lived in extreme minus temperatures for the first year. And the building falls in sections. So if you imagine a big square and it's split into quarters and then that is split into levels. And if you lose one, it can drag others down with it and you'll never get it back. So... I thought we were going to manage, but we're not. And the reason I thought we were going to manage is because the radiators are behind this racking. Well, you would think that wouldn't make such a big difference or put out heat. Let me tell you, when you're in this region, right, and everything is, is minus 20 or 30 degrees below freezing, it matters. And I'm noticing other parts of the building getting cold spots because this part is not producing any heat. And that door you see behind me is usually open and that feeds the stairwell and the heat from here feeds the stairwell. In addition to that, this is my stores. It is full, full of fluids. 
If, if this wing froze, I'm done. I'm finished. Let me show you. Now I know I haven't showed this room in detail before because it's a storeroom. There's nothing interesting. Right, there's my sink. Water. Fluids. Fluids, fluids, fluids. Does it look a mess? No. Right, cleaning and important supplies. Vehicles. Electrics. Paint. Paints. Chemicals. Nails. Screws. Larger screws. All manner of hoses, pipes and connections. Top three shelves. Electrical. Nuts, bolts, screws and washers. Nuts, bolts, screws, kitchen equipment. Right, various and random equipment. Various and random equipment, bolts. Anyway, the whole place is rammed. More paint, some plumbing section down there. Everything is rammed. The radio, as you can see, there's one. Right, I can get to that and bleed that one. There's another one. I can get to that and bleed that. The others are behind here. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear some room off the top so that I can... Ooh, I never thought about that. I wonder if I can see with the camera. So that I can see behind there to work out which one of these racks I need to remove to get to the bleed screws because one of the radiators down this end is stopping all of them working. So I shouldn't even be here. I should be getting ready to go out on a job. So I've had this job... I've been on the job six weeks and out of that six weeks I've only actually been on site for six days and two of those were part days because of the temperature, because they were late in paying, there's all manner of things that's caused the problem which is why I don't take work on during the winter because you just, you just never know. Anyway, I think, I think it's the middle rack here with all the plumbing stuff and all the heavy stuff obviously that's got to come out. So I'm going to get up and over the top and shine down and see which rack, if only I have to remove one, to get to the radiators and trying to get the air out of here because it, it's going to cause a problem and we're going to be in real trouble if this gets any colder in this room. I'm going to start on the rack I think I need to clear. Now there is another element to the impending doom right that could play an important part not only these lights in your visuals which is really bad or there's nothing i'll do about it if i wake my sarah up while i'm doing this right whilst you won't know about it i'll know what impending doom is and it won't be short and it won't be pleasant yeah all right so what kind of crap do I keep in my stalls? Well, I can see two giant electrical boxes, complete with fuses. I can see parts to chimneys, right? Diesel parts, air vent parts, fan belts, machine belts, glass seed, just, you know, glass seed. Anyway. I have to get over the back here. Let me get some of this heavy stuff off of here. What do you mean, electrical, Simon? I mean, we're still on this shit. Anyway.
So that took me 24 minutes to empty that. So this is potentially the first time this has been moved in 40 years. Wrap it up. I suppose that's got a date on it, has it? Anyway, there's one radiator. We can get to the end of that one. There's heat coming out of this. And there's the other radiator. This, this is hot. So I've done all this, and this radiator is hot. Really? And that one's cold. Yeah, okay, let's start with that one then. Literally, we can get a key on the end of that. I wonder what that stuff is hanging up there. Right, well, this one in the middle, no, this is up. So, one out of the four is working. I wonder what that is. That's wet. We've got a Lincoln radiator in it. Yep, we got a Lincoln radiator. Well, we wouldn't have known about that, would we? Rust is out. Well, it's so many of them are. Look at that. Good job that was plastic, otherwise that would break. So the fact that this one directly behind here is working, and the one further down isn't, and the two further up isn't, aren't, means it's not airlocked like I thought it was. And I've just bled the radiators and there's water right up to the top. Although, other than this one that's working, the water up the top is just water, it's got no glyco in it, which means these haven't circulated since I filled the system, which is bad as well. Right, so have I wasted my time? No, because I'm more knowledgeable now than I was when I started this, and I'm only an hour into this, so uh, it should take me another 40 minutes to put it back if I put it back and sort it while I'm doing it. Does that help us out any? Well, other than I know there's one working here, there should be four, but one is better than none. I have a theory, and my theory is stuck stats. Right, there's thermostats on all these radiators. Thermostats. And what they do is they push a valve in on the radiator. Right, I'll see if I can show you. Right, you'll see there, that's a rod. And when I turn the stat, off that pushes that rod in right and that is attached to a small metal pin that closes and opens a valve inside the radiators and when you pull it out right it lets the valve out and allows water to throw to flow around the radiator so you can see here when it's fully in it's set to off shut the radiator off completely and when it's fully out set to five that allows the valve to open completely. And these are these old stats are on all these radiators. Well, if the valve is stuck, when you undo this, it doesn't come out and it's not allowing water to flow. So you can see they're held on with a screw. And obviously on the radiator that's down there, the screw is facing the cabinet, which means I've got to either empty out a complete another cabinet or cut through this plastic ring, pull the stat off, pull the valve pusher out, 
tap on it with a pair of pliers, the valve will open, and we should get heat to the radiator. So there's the thermostat on this radiator, and there's the screw that you'd undo to pull it off. Well, on this radiator, when it decides it's gonna focus, there we go, on that radiator, you can see I've got no room in here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this junior hacksaw in there and cut through that plastic ring. Left-handed, obviously. Okay, right, and we can clearly see there's a pin in the middle of this and it's stuck all the way in. I'll say we can clearly see. Can we clearly see? Right, it looks blurry to me, but that might just be my bad eyesight. See, we get a pair of pliers on that. And when I pull that out, water should come out. Oh, that's the valve opened. Oh, there's no water coming out. That means the valve is stuck. Okay, I'll put the rack back in. I've got that one going, but the, the battery decided to die. Right. So that leaves me one more to do. So both the two behind the rack in there, they're done. That one over there is done. This one I can easily get to. Right, and you're going to see much more what I'm talking about. So this radiator is dead and cold. The thermostat fits on here and there's a push rod goes into here and it, act, it operates a valve, right? All the way in, it's closed, all the way out is open, allows water to flow around the radiator. This one's stone cold, this stat must be stuck as well. So firstly, we'll take the outer housing off, which we can get to. Right, we can see that it's stuck all the way in. Right, I think we can see that it's stuck all the way in. Perhaps I'll give you a closer look. You can see the small push rod there that operates the valve is stuck all the way in. Right, that means this valve is shut off. Now what I had to do on the last one is pull that bar out, push it in, pull it out, hit it with hammer several times all the way around until the valve opened. It's going to be some shaky camera work. I don't have any of my tripods available other than that big one. Right. So, if we're lucky, we'll pull out this small push rod and the valve will open, water will come out, and it'll open. No. Right. There's the rod. Nothing. So that means the valve's shut. It's stuck shut. So then we take a Tonya Harding. Right. Now we just heard some air come up. That's what we heard. That means that the valve's moved. That just means we move some air around. It's not going to work. Right, so now we do, we push the little bar in. We start to beat on that. Right, All right 
hopefully when we put it out this time there'll be water. Yeah! There we go, that means the valve's open. Push that back in. There it comes. Make it bounce. Sorry about the camera work. Make it bounce, pull it out again, all the way. There we go. That valve's open now. Now what I should have done, I should have released the valve in the upright pipe, which is at the top of the radiator. Let the air out. So the water comes out. Hot water. There you go. And that's what we had to do, that behind that cabinet. So that's now one, two, three, and four. All radiators working. And that is going to resolve so many potential problems. And that also means these radiators were full of just water. They didn't have glycol, the antifreeze that I have to have so badly here flowing around them. And that's also why you saw rust, because... I'll tell you a story. So a quick history, these radiators, along with the school, were, were put in in 1948. And the school ran right up until 1979. And then the reason the school shut is because the village emptied. So the village became quite big because of the railroad and then the road. And once the road building had finished to a certain extent, then uh, the next generation, the younger generation, all left for the cities and needed to get work. So without the railroad and the road, large construction, that there is no work here. So then the school was shut down in 1979 and then bought in 1980. And whilst these radiators were kept running, most of the central heating system was cut off. Just, I mean, just the pipes cut. And it was run like that right up until 2017. And in that time, the radiators were working, wouldn't have had glycol in, they'd have just had normal water in. And therefore the radiators rust because they're cast iron. Would they have had glycol in when it was the school? Possibly not. Possibly I'm the first person ever to put glycol in this system. And then in, in 2017, I resurrected the entire central heating system. Well, not all of it. I've been doing bits over the years, and more, and more but the majority of it by the end of the 2017, so the winter 2017, 2018, most of it was working. And then I've continued to add to it and add to it and add to it until today we've got over 60 of these waterborne radiators around the building. And I'm not finished. I've got another two to fit. So these valves that you just saw me unstick, they could have been shut off in 1979, 1980, and never opened. And um, these have all been working. So why this valve got stuck off, I don't know. Did I turn the radiators off in the summer when they weren't needed? So that we just put heat where, we... I don't recall, but I could have done. Anyway, that's a stuck stat. So you have to pull the the little bar in and out, whack it with the hammer a few times, whack it on the ends, bounce the valve, get the valve unstuck. It's got a fairly hefty spring in there and now we've got four radiators working that this morning were not radiate working. That also resolves all the cold spots in the stairwell. And the reason I worry about the stairwell is some of our pipes run through the concrete in the stairwell. And if the concrete dips too low, then the pipes freeze. Anyway, that's a good job. Now we'll fill this rack back up. Time to sort this, get it all back in the racking. Just been down to uh, feed the furnace. That's actually reduced our outgoing water temperature by five degrees. Four radiators, although they've just come on, has reduced our outgoing water temperature, which means it's reduced our incoming water temperature considerably. Now, if we go down to BTUs or square feet of radiating area that one of these radiators has, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's had a four degree effect, but but, and this is the but, it has increased our room temperature from three degrees to nine degrees. So it's a six degree temperature increase. I've opened this door now to allow the heat into the stairwells. 
So it's reduced our outgoing water temperature by four degrees, but it's increased our room temperature here by six degrees. And that's good. We're in the safe zone now. It should be uh, at its coldest, nine, eight, eight, between eight and 10 degrees. Anyway, now I'm rabbiting. Right, time to sort this lot out, I guess, and uh, tidy up and redistribute where required. How long has that taken us so far? So that's 10.15. And uh, it looks dark and gloomy outside. Well, that's because it is, because it's only just got light. Yeah, and it is dark and gloomy. The camera always makes it look brighter than it really is, so I don't know why, but anyway. That's it, that's that job done. Desk is cleared. I didn't bother filming, putting it all away because I was sorting it as I was doing it. But I will show you the result. So when I put that unit back in there, I had an empty shelf, that one there. And it's always been here. And it's always been overrun. So this one here is tapes, staples, brads, nails for nail guns, anything like that. So I put that there. You see the whole unit is much nicer. That emptied this one here. And now what I've done is I've separated machine and three-phase electrics to household electrics. Okay, first fix, second fix stuff, stuff that I haven't fitted yet. So result. <coughs> what has that done for our temperature? Brought it up to 11 degrees. All round. And we've been on that six hours. Anyway, six hours Sunday morning, it's now Sunday afternoon. Is it light outside? No, it's starting to get dark. Well, that looked like it, but it is starting to get dark. Did the temperatures rise like the weatherman said they were going to? No. Is it still around minus 20 out there? Or oh, 20 degrees below freezing? Yeah, it is 20 degrees below freezing. So, uh, Is that still there? Yep. And that's just because I haven't got to uh, doing what, I can't focus 100% on what I'm doing inside because I'm trying to move this other job along at the same time, which is not working for me, I've got to tell you. So any impending disaster, completely averted, which I think is a good thing. Uh, might have been a bit boring, that, except with the learning on the valves. That's quite interesting if you don't know. You have to mess with a few of those before you work out how to get them running again. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider it. If you fancy donating to the channel and it's in aid of uh, media equipment that I need, then there's a, a buy me a coffee banner in the main banner on the homepage. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.